Welcome to SRC. You guys doing good? You guys doing good? Awesome. Hey, um, let's do it. Lauren, uh, why don't you come up here and share that testimony? Come on. W- welcome Lauren as she comes. Come on down. Woo! Come on, come on, come on. How you doing? You doing good? You're just like... Le- yeah, you're just, you're feeling that too? Yeah. I yeah. declare uh, our fearless Lauren. Yeah! Um... You're just like leading people to Jesus and stuff. A couple weeks ago, you shared on Sunday night the testimony of leading that, the, that Buddhist man to the Lord. And you just brought him into an encounter with Jesus. I thought that was really cool. Last week, we had such a great time at, um, at our uh, Pattern Interrupt Evangelism Cloud. You shared another testimony. I, I just thought, hey, and if you got something more, uh, more from the last couple of days, you can share that as well. But I thought, hey, let's just do it. Testimony of Jesus is spirit of prophecy. So that's kind of fun. Go, Lauren, go. <laughs> okay, so... Um yeah, a couple weeks ago, I was just, it was another really nice day. I was heading to the park outside my house, and I had planned to, like, just spend some time in prayer. And um, walking to the park, I was kind of just talking to the Lord, and I was just like, I want to do what you have for me. And then, like, two minutes later, I ran into this street evangelist that I knew from, uh, like, seven years ago <laughs> from an old city that I used to live in. And he was planning on going to the same park. So I was like, okay, I guess my, wow. my quiet time has been put on hold. And I was just following him. And we're going throughout the park and talking to different people. And um, the first group of people we talked to were uh, this group of, you know, teenage boys. And we were just kind of telling them Bible stories. And then uh, maybe a couple hours later, um, I happened to be by myself. And I noticed one of the the kids uh, from that group, he was also by himself. And it was like one of those weird moments where like the park was really busy and there was all these people. Then all of a sudden there was this moment where it was totally quiet. Nobody was coming around. And I was like, you know, maybe this is my opportunity um, to go and talk to him one on one. So I just went over there and I, you know, started asking him about school, about life and um, was just talking to him about things in general. And he said, you know, I I do talk to Jesus sometimes. And I was like, well, you said you you don't believe. Why do you talk to Jesus? And um, he just said, it's nice to think that somebody listens to you. Wow. Wow. So um, I just got to say that I know without a doubt that Jesus listens to you. And that's the reason why um, I'm talking to you right now. And um, I I said that the, the Lord speaks to us in a lot of different ways. Just most of the time we miss it. And that's why he sends people like me and my friend to go in and talk to you and your friends. And, you know, I was just bringing up different ways that God talks to us. And I think I mentioned dreams at some point. And he's like, yeah, I see things before they happen in my dreams sometimes. And I was like, that's so cool. You get dreams from God. And then uh, I was just telling him the story of Joseph. And um, I asked him, you know, if if I could pray with him. And um, somewhere in the conversation... Uh, he mentioned that his mom has, uh, I'm going to say had, <laughs> um, I haven't seen him since then, but um, his mom has been going through cancer. Wow. And so, um, you know, I got to tell him that, you know, Jesus definitely hears all those prayers. And, wow. Um, that you've been really trying to fight for your family and stand in, in the gap for your brothers and sisters and for your mom. And he had just had amazing things to say about his mom. It was wow. awesome. Wow. And I and I said, you know, I'm here. I'm here for you. I said, Jesus wants to carry that burden. He doesn't want you carrying that burden. Yes. And um, I, I prayed for healing for his mom, and I prayed for him, and um, I asked him how he felt. Good, good. And, what do you um, say? You know, he was not the communicative type. He yeah. Was very, you know. You know. <laughs> yeah, teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, which was why it was really nice that he like opened up. Um, but, you know, I asked him, do you feel better? Do you feel at peace? And he said, yes. And I awesome. said, that's Jesus. And so yes. I asked him if he wanted to um, invite Jesus into his heart. And he did. And, um, Can you say that again? And he did. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Yeah. And, you know, I just told him, like, you don't need anybody else to come in and pray for you or pray for your family. Jesus is with you. He's going to teach you how to do it. Keep listening to your dreams. And um, yeah, he's got he's got some big things um, coming. <laughs> so good, you did you did that so well. Come on, you just keep going after it, you little evangelist, you. Come on, come on, come on. All right, I'll take that back. Awesome. Hey, bless you, Lauren. I'm so proud of you. 
you're just going after it. Um, Gwendolyn, um, she's in our class too, and she was driving by um, a lady that looked like she was in need. So she rolled down her window and she yelled at her. Um, you know, this is a pattern interrupt class, right? Like, so the whole thing is that we partner with Jesus to interrupt people. <laughs> and she yelled out her window and just said, uh, hey, you need some food. And the lady said that she did. And so Gwendolyn hooked her up uh, with, a, with a food bank and they got this lady some food. And then the lady shared that she, uh, that she had cancer. And so anyways, Gwendolyn just kind of just did the deal, you know, just uh, shared, shared a, a simple gospel message with her and then prayed for her and, and, then, uh, and then led her into a relationship with Jesus. I got to dance, right? And then, uh, and then prayed a healing prayer. And Gwendolyn followed up with the lady. The lady went and got uh, a, a, a scan of her body. And there's no cancer anywhere in, in her body. Isn't that awesome? Wow! Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Equally powerful miracles. Receiving Jesus as Savior and getting getting healed of, of cancer. I don't, uh, the, the gal that was here on Sunday night, Pastor Gillis, Alyssa, is she here in this service? Alyssa, are you in this service? Okay, awesome. Maybe the next service. Uh, a gal uh, was here on Sunday night after the cameras uh, turned off, and uh, we were here till midnight on Sunday night. It was, it was great. And the service started at 6 p.m., so that was, that was a good one. And um, there was a gal here, okay, and she was healed of a rare uh, uh, immune uh, disease over at Jake's house when Richard Gordon was over there so he prayed for her and like so this thing like um, uh, it, it must attack your joints and your tissue and stuff because this lady had uh, when you have this disease you have like braces on every joint so she literally had these little wire braces on every finger braces on her knees like all over her body and so Richard Gordon prayed for her at Jake's house and she was healed praise God and, but she was here on Sunday night, and she t- shared her testimony about being healed over at Jake's house. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. Sitting right behind her is a, is, is a girl that's part of our church, and she was sitting right behind her with the same exact rare autoimmune disease with braces on all her fingers, on her knees, and everything else. So Patty and I, we're ministering to a gal, and all of a sudden we hear the whole church just a roar, like erupting and praise, and people are just clapping their hands, and Jeanette comes and gets me. I, I run over. They said, this is like, like so the gal gal that got healed prayed for the other gal with the immune and and for the and she could lift up her arms over her head so that was a really big deal because she couldn't lift her arms up over her head like because of just the cartilage and everything so I said hey that's awesome so I I I come back and I'm I'm joined Patty again we're praying for this gal it's really cool Jesus is just moving through the building when all of a sudden um, I don't know if it's 10 minutes later the whole church, I mean, people just scream. I mean, it is loud. It is not like kind of loud. It's not like a, a golf game. It's like, it's like 12th man time. People are just like going crazy. And I look up and this girl's got the braces off of her knees. And she's running around the building with a smile on her face. Totally healed, you guys. And then, and then she text message, she text messaged Pastor Gail this week of a video of her running up the steps to the front door of her house, like totally healed. Like this, they're, they're part of a, a, of a um, support group online, like in all of the United States. And they get onto these Zoom calls and they chat with each other. And, and man, I can't wait to hear um, how that Zoom call goes when this gal reports, I was, once, I was once afflicted by infirmity, but now I'm healed. Jesus healed me. Man, so, ah, I got I to gotta dance. I got to dance. Man, so cool. If you got your Bible, turn with me um, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 23. We're, um, we're back to our, our, our study of the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going through this entire uh, book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We're really big into the Bible here at SRC. We love the Word of God. We love the Spirit of God. We love the God, uh, 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 the, the Logos and the Rhema, we, uh, the, the, the written and the God breathed, right? Revelation. Um, and so we're really big into it. Um, and so we're going through this. And God is just so cool. Um, God is just so prophetic. <laughs> and it's funny how he always kind of lines up what we're studying with kind of what we're, what we're going through. 
And um, this is our Church Under Fire series. And how many know that the church is under fire right now? And, um, and, the, and fire is good. How many know that fire doesn't technically destroy things? Uh, it, it's not like it makes things cease to exist. What fire does is actually it reorders the molecules of something. And actually what God is doing is he's not destroying the church. He is he is recalibrating the church, and that includes SRC. If you're willing to embrace the recalibration of the Holy Spirit, there will be a grace when you embrace what is coming from his face. But if you refuse what the Lord wants to do while claiming to be an ambassador and claiming to represent the kingdom, but you don't want the king, I don't think there will be a grace on your life or on churches that are not willing to embrace the grace that comes from the face of the king. I am doing that. Uh, intentionally rhyming because I think it's fun all right and 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 then what I can do is I can re-edit this sermon and put a rap beat behind it and it actually works right when you embrace the grace the times from the face of the king everything will be full of bling anyways all right so this is gonna be good <laughs> And today we're going to be talking about how to discern true Christian liberties. And we're going to be talking about freedom. And we're going to be looking at um, uh, uh, this place. You guys, I'm telling you, there is this place where you can be radically free in Christ. Or there is this place where you can just be a narcissistic Christian. And sometimes they look very, like, they look similar. So what's the difference between Christian narcissism and true Christian liberty? And that's what Paul's talking about. Paul is, Paul is leaning in to some dysfunctional stuff that's happening in the church in Corinth, this first century church. And the Holy Spirit is using this text to lean into the tension of the 21st century American church. Saying, hey, it's important that we as a people, that we as individuals, that we can discern the grace for true Christian liberty within our lives. And that we're using this liberty for kingdom redemptive restorative means and that we're not just using our liberty to actually make ourselves uh, happy satisfied fulfilled but at the expense of seeing other people actually torn down and maybe even uh, neglecting or forsaking their faith so what what we're going to do this will be kind of fun we're going to look at first corinthians 23 we're going to go all the way uh, to, to chapter 11 verse 1 okay and then i'm going to do it again in the 11 o'clock Okay, and it's going to be better. I get to, I get to do this twice. I'm going to nail it. And then tonight, Pastor Anthony, he only gets one try <laughs> to do the same message, to do the same thing. So this is what I know. I'm going to crush this today. But as for Pastor Anthony, he's going to hit a grand slam. Go on. It's going to be amazing. You say, why is Pastor Anthony preaching tonight? Well, because he's awesome. And because about 6 o'clock, my family and I, um, we about to get on an airplane to go to... Uh, Minister to the indigenous fishies of Maui. To share the gospel with sunfish and manta rays and maybe even catch myself a blue marlin. Can we come into agreement? I'll, I'll, I'll come back with a stuff, like I'll come back with those, one of those big obnoxious things so I can hang it right up at my fireplace and bum out Andrea. Let's, let's come into agreement. Anyways, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> do it Lord come on I already looked up online how much it costs to stuff one of those puppies you know I don't have an office here at SRC but I could just hang that marlin up in, in the hallway out there and just bum everybody out you know awesome 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 that would make me happy good why is there a fish out there well I'll make you fishers of something good here's what Paul says and and I like I like that Paul every now and then when he says like when he says something he puts it in in slogans you know, and when Paul does this, he's actually, he's quoting famous phrases from, catchphrases from, from, from the time here. So he starts off by saying, everything is permissible, okay? And then he responds to it, but not everything is beneficial. And then he does it again. He goes, everything is permissible, right? But not everything is constructive, yeah, so that's how he, that's how he begins uh, uh, this text. And, um, and let's just do this real, real quick. I just wanted to pray. So let's pause. Jesus, help. <laughs> Holy Spirit, come. 
We ask that you would reveal your word. We ask, Lord, that you would do something here that would ignite within us. And Holy Spirit, I ask, Lord, that your fire would come and that it would reveal Jesus in this service. And that everything that is not of you would be kicked to the curb and that we would remove the tires of anything that's demonic and anxious, that anything that is not of Christ, that anything is not good and pure and noble, Lord, that we would kick it to the curb right now in Jesus' name. And I pray for, Lord, Lord, that your fierce fire would help us focus in on what you're trying to say, not what Darren is trying to say, but your fierce fire would give us focus. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that a spirit of distraction would get kicked to the curb right now. We're going to stay on track this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that spirit of unity, that place where you command a blessing. And we declare Seattle Revival Center is a blessed people. We are a free people. We are burning hot and bright with the fire of God to reveal Jesus Christ on the earth. Lord, we thank you for this time and space. Holy Spirit, we pray that you'd hover all up in our midst. Have your way. In Jesus' name, all the saints of God said? Amen. They said? Amen. They said? That means we're in agreement. Cheers. Okay, let's continue. He says, everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Okay, and um, uh, 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 what are you saying here, this word constructive? It actually means to be edified. It actually means to build up. So I'm, I'm just going to give you one thing I want you to remember it this morning. Christian freedom comes to build up. It comes to start a construction project. Christian liberty, that when you've got the Spirit of Christ Jesus, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. So when you've got the liberty of Christ Jesus, what you have is a bunch of angels that show up at your house, and they show up with hard hats on, they show up with tool belts on. You have all these angels who say, well, what's going on? Why is heaven moving into my house? Because we're coming to build something up. We're coming, this is a construction project. You see, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan comes to tear down. He comes to tear you down, to tear other people down, right? But the Holy Spirit is always restorative and redemptive. And listen, if you're here today and your life is in shame, if you just feel like stuff's getting removed from you, if you just feel like things are getting torn down, you just think that like relationships are volatile, you just think that, man, it just feels like the enemy keeps stealing and jacking stuff out, like the enemy, you know, hey, I got good news. As you surrender your all to the Lord, all of a sudden you're going to find, it might be tonight at 10 a.m. Wow, someone's at the door. Who's that? The host of heaven, Jesus. He's coming to move in. He's coming to take your ashes and to bring beauty out of them. So this is, this is what we know. Christian liberty, Christian freedom always comes to edify. This is what Paul says. I, I, I long that you would all prophesy. Why? Because when you prophesy, you edify. When you release that prophetic frequency, it does war against the frequency of the enemy that comes to disintegrate, that comes to decay, that comes to dismantle. But when you partner with Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, where there was once decay, now there's restoration. Once there was once frustration, now there's shalom and peace. Where, where there was once open doors to the enemy, now we got closed doors right in the face of the enemy. And right, and now there's no longer a hole in your bucket. Now you get to accumulate and you get to overflow. Paul says everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Verse 24, sorry, uh, 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 yeah, verse 24. All right, now no one should seek his own good, but the good of others. This is what he says. Hey, as believers, we shouldn't be selfish, right? We should seek the shalom of other peoples and not just use the grace of God on our lives to consume it on us. Just to clear right now, remember? Others. Yeah, this is so big. Looking at the purpose of Christian liberty. Verse 25. Um, he says, eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience for the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Now he's circling back around. If you've been with us for a few weeks, we'll know that this issue of division in the church because of this feuding over if it's okay for Christians to eat meat that's been offered to idols. Paul circles back around. He says, listen, if they, if they sell it at the meat market, go ahead and eat it. Why? 
Because assuming it's not one of them patties made out of, like, uh, estrogen, you know, like, like <laughs> sorry, too much. Like, you cut it. Wow, it bleeds. How'd they do that? It's not real meat. I can't believe it's not meat, right? What is it? Who the heck knows? Bunch of GMOs or something. But, okay, good, good time. If you want to be healthy, sometimes you need to find some good old-fashioned God-created flesh. I don't eat meat. Well, here's some lamb. All right, good. This is what Paul says. He says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. <laughs> Verse 27. If, if some unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go, eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of conscience. Isn't this awesome? He's like, listen, if some unbeliever wants to eat with you, praise God. Why? Because most unbelievers don't want to eat with Christians. <laughs> so if an unbeliever ever wants to have a meal with you, praise God. What does that mean? It means that they're finding you attractive. They're, they're seeing Christ Jesus in you. And hey, if you're eating with an unbeliever, and, and th this issue wouldn't come up a lot today, but the, the issue that would come up today is that most Christians don't eat with unbelievers. So the issue here isn't necessarily meat. It's are our hearts open to people because they would say that some meat is unclean versus a lot of Christians today say that a lot of uh, people are unclean. Yeah, based off of who they voted for, you know, based off of their political or philosophical or cultural theological views. I'd prefer not to eat with you. Why? Because, uh, because we don't look exactly like each other. And this is what Paul says. If somebody that you would consider to be unclean wants to sit down and eat some unclean meat, this is, what he's, this is what he's talking here. He says, hey, don't trip out. It's all good. Verse 20, 28. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, meaning that you're about to sit down and eat a meal with another believer, and they are starting to stumble. They are starting to kind of trip out a little bit because they're recognizing, this meat was offered to idols, and this makes me feel icky and weird. Then Paul says, at that point, take him out to McDonald's. Verse 29. The other man's conscience, I mean, looking out for theirs, not just yours. For why should my freedom be judged by another's conscience? Verse 30, if I take part in the meal with thankfulness, with gladness of heart, why am I denounced because of something I did for God? Now, verse 30, Paul's not talking about somebody that's sitting down at the table that's stumbling about their own conscience. Verse 30, he's now actually talking about religious people that would use the fact that you just ate meat, offered to, uh, to an idol, and that they would use what you did against you because you fell short of their religious perfection. I mean, you have, uh, it's basically he's just talking about judgmental Christians. Now, no one raise your hand, but how many of you have ever known a judgmental Christian? <laughs> okay, just me. All right, this is what he says here. He says, um, uh, what do we do if somebody uh, in the church is cast in judgment because we're eating something, and now they think that they're better than us? He, he responds, why should I be denounced for something that I'm giving thanks to God for? He's like, why should I let you scorn me? Why should I let you ridicule me? Why should I let you judge me? I'm sitting here before God with a clean conscience. With thanksgiving, with gladness in my heart. There are those, okay, that are trying to do right by the Lord. That really do have sincere questions. Hey, is it a sin if I engage with this? Is this going to be pleasing to the Lord? Is this going to be constructive in my life? Or is this going to be uh, um, destructive in my life? Is this going to partner with what Holy Spirit wants to do in me and my family, with my identity and destiny? Um, and then, honestly, there are those that think they have it all figured out. And they've boiled down relationship and intimacy into a bunch of rules. Thinking that if they nail the rules, then somehow that makes them holy or righteous. And here's the problem, is that when we replace intimacy with Jesus, when we replace relationship with Jesus, when we replace intimacy and relationship with each other for just a bunch of rules, now we become fake, phony, and predictable. And we declare Jesus as our Lord and Savior, okay, but he's not our true functional Lord and Savior, 
It's just lip service. Why? Because we are our own functional Lord and Savior. And hey, listen, I know I've, it sounds like I'm being tough on religious people, but let me tell you something. I have to repent of religion all the time. Yeah. And how do I know I, have to, I need to repent? Because I get offended. Believe it or not, you know. <laughs> and it's usually not secular things that offend me. It's, it's usually religious things that offend me. You know, most artifacts at Christian bookstores offend me. But well, here's the thing. That when I get, <laughs> when I get a, even some potpourri offends me. When I get offended... I realize, well, there's something going on in my own heart. When I, when I get offended by you, usually you're not the issue. Usually there's something going on in my own heart. And I realize that I have developed a system or a procedure. I've set up some sort of uh, a structure. And I'm putting my trust in that structure. Instead of putting my trust in Jesus and loving and valuing people. Oftentimes when we get offended, it's because people are... are, are they don't even know it, but they are dishonoring the systems and cages that we built to make us feel safe. And it's like, I have developed this routine and this thing to make me feel safe, and you just violated it. And in doing so, you violated my sense of identity. And so, in the name of wanting to be holy, we build ourselves a cage and we lock ourselves in it. And then all of a sudden we find out that we are not truly light. Why? Because we're in a room full of light. Right? We got a lot of light here, you know. I could add another light, but what good would that do? Where do we need light? In dark places. Where do we need keys? Next to locked cages. Where do we need hope for the hopeless? Where do we need a voice for the voiceless? And this is why it's so, so, so important that we unshackle ourselves from the cages that we built because we were told this is what a Christian looks like. No, it's not. What what does a Christian look like? It looks like Jesus. It doesn't look like a Pharisee or a Sadducee or a wouldn't see or couldn't see, right? A, A Christian looks like Jesus. And what does Jesus look like? Jesus was the most anti-religious he did everything you shouldn't do he hung out with everyone you shouldn't hang out with why because he came to seek and save those who were lost for the father did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him that whosoever would believe in him would not perish. If you don't know Jesus today, you need Jesus. You don't need a church. You don't need a path. You don't need some rule. You need Jesus. And that's hard to hear if you think you don't need him. But I want you to hear, and I'll just speak to your spirit right now. You need Jesus, and you know it. So only would say it like this. You're like, don't talk to my spirit without my permission. Sorry. You speak to my soul, darn it, right? Like like, um, Solomon would say it like this, that God has embedded in our spirit the record of eternity. That means you can say whatever you want to me. I don't believe in any of this. Yeah, yeah, that might be true of your soul, but your spirit knows what's up. Your spirit knows what's up. There is no God, and then you're out in creation, and your spirit's saying, yeah. No, stop it, stop it. I don't want to worship. No, I don't even believe in any of this stuff. (laughs) You see the waves and you see the ocean. Your spirit's like, I know you are real. And your soul's like, I don't believe, I don't believe. I don't like Christians. I don't like church. I don't like, even God's like, yeah, even I don't like some Christians. I don't don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I love them, but sometimes I don't like them, you know. You need Jesus. And don't let your experience with some sort of religious gerbil running in the old hamster wheel of religion turn you off to the real thing. You are a son and daughter created in the image and likeness of God. You just have amnesia. 
You just need to be awakened to who you really, wrapped in the DNA of your mommy and daddy and daddy's daddy and daddy's daddy and all their issues. This is who y'all be. This is who y'all be. This is, you, know, you know, DNA, DNA, you know, uh, wants me fall, you know, fat, bald, and dead. That's my DNA. Right, right, right. This is who you are. This is who you are. Right, let, let's get this wrapped up, right? But the blood of Jesus is what defines me. The blood of Jesus is what we engage with today. Engaging with the very DNA of God, the very programming of God, knowing that I am not defined by the programming of my mom and daddy. And God bless them, I have some really good programming from them. But I've got the spirit of Christ Jesus that is within me, that is transforming me daily, growing me up from glory to glory, which means that I change most when I sleep at night. That even as I rest, my spirit man is ministering to my soul, and I'm being redeemed, and I'm being restored. My, 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 my soul, my, my, my spirit's just like, soul, you just wait, you just wait, because soon you're going to go to sleep, and I'm going to restore you. Ah! I got the fire of God in me. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you do too, and some of you are going to. It's not an accident that anyone's here. I, I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in coincidence. Holy Spirit is here to awaken you to who you are. Verse 31. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews or Greeks or the church of God, even as I try to please everybody in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. This is what Paul says. I, I'm free. Like, I'm totally free. And sometimes I'll eat some really good cheap steak. And sometimes I'll eat some really good expensive steak. Just depending on who I'm with. But know this. I never eat spam. <laughs> I apologize to all my Polynesian brothers. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I see that in. Now, this is what Paul says. Hey, I, I am free, and I am so free that I exist to serve what Christ Jesus is doing in you because my freedom exists to see you built up in your identity and your destiny. That my freedom exists to see me built up. That my freedom in Christ does not exist to shipwreck you, to discourage you, or to frustrate you. Because freedom in Christ is selfless, not selfish. Now in a few weeks we are going to be officially in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because it's going to give you a revelation of what Christian freedom looks like. Melanie, could you, could you come? And awesome. Melanie, you're so awesome. If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am noisy. I'm like a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and the understanding of all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Now most of us would disagree with that. Most of us would argue with that. We would say, if you have the tongues of men and of angels, you are awesome and you should be on Sid Roth. Today, we're going to be talking about angelic tongues and how you can have them. Uh, by the way, I absolutely love Sid, right? Supernatural. He says, and if I have prophetic powers and the understanding of all mysteries and all knowledge, that's pretty cool as well. How many of you would drive to Spokane, Washington, just to be in the same room as a minister who actually had the understanding of all mysteries and all, how many of you would drive across the country to hear someone speak that was actually walking with the understanding of all mysteries and all knowledge? If I had all faith so I could remove a mountain, how many of you would travel to Europe to see a, a, a preacher that could speak to mountains and make them disappear? 
Am I the only one? I'm buying that plane ticket. He made what? No, bro, he doesn't. He didn't just do it. He does it. What's your spiritual gift? I make mountains disappear. So you got like an e-course on that? Count me in. Paul said, these things are amazing. They'll sell a lot of books. But if you have not love, they amount to nothing. And then he, then he continues. He says, if I give away all that I have, if I deliver my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Now look what he says. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, it does not boast. It is not arrogant, it is not rude. It does not insist on getting its own way. It is not irritable, it is not resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. This is what we're looking at. What's the difference between true Christian freedom, true Christian liberty, versus narcissism? I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. I do it around. That's how Paul began. All things are permissible. They said it then, they say it now. All things are permissible. I'm not under the law. I know the law. I don't go to that church. Right. They believe in the tithe. I'm not under the law. I live in the <laughs> And this is what Paul says. Christian liberty is patient. Christian liberty is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It doesn't insist on getting its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice at wrong, wrongdoing. Christian liberty, our freedom in Christ, it rejoices with the truth. Bearing all things, believing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things. Things. This is what he's doing. Paul's always contrasting these two places. That in Christ Jesus there's grace, there's freedom. It is true. You're not under the law. You're free, but the freedom doesn't exist unto self. The freedom exists to be a part of this beautiful redemptive construction project where we get to lean into the fracturedness of a sin and sickness and disease and death and, and what our natural DNA has tried to convince us of. And we get to be invited into this beautiful place of partnering with the Holy Spirit to prophesy and to edify and to build up and to realize we're free. You're free. You can listen to oldies. You're free. You can try to stretch without farting. You're free. You are free in Christ. And we get to partner with the Holy Spirit. Not to get on Facebook and tell everybody how they should live their lives. But to use our freedom to point people to Christ. To point people to Jesus. And Paul would call this the most excellent way. The most excellent way, the way of love. Yeah? Let's stand. Hey, let me ask you a question real quick. In your life, what's been torn down and what needs to be built back up? In fact, let's just do this because I, I'm distracting. Why don't you just close your eyes, bow your head, fold your hands. Just kidding on the hands thing. Let's just pray. Holy Spirit, what in our life has the enemy, has sin, has selfishness been able to tear down? And what do you want to build up? Where do you want to bring your angels? Where do you want to bring your construction team? Would you show us right now any area of our life where, where the enemy's torn things down, but you're ready to build something up? Would you just speak to us? Just show us right now. Thank you. Let's ask an, another question. Holy Spirit, would you show me what people in my life they've been torn down by the enemy 
Maybe they've even been torn down by religion. Maybe they're just disenfranchised with anything that's, that's Christian. Because of that system where people scorn them and they didn't have a revelation of what Paul is talking about. Lord, would you speak to us and just show us any one that's been torn down and you want to build them up? Do you see someone? Lord, show, show you someone? All right, let's pray together. Would you just repeat after me? Just say, Jesus, I make myself available not to be a part of the demolition team, but to be a part of the construction crew. Jesus, I want to partner with you to build up people, places, things. So I ask for a fresh grace that I would be able to partner with you to minister redemption and restoration. To see people received to see people restored and to see people revealed while having a lot of fun and eating a lot of red meat. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Hey, listen, if you need prayer for anything, I know I sure do. Um, go ahead and just uh, meet us up here at the front. We have an incredible ministry team. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love just to stand with you if you need healing or, or anything at all. Uh, otherwise, uh, please, please um, cover me and my family uh, in prayer. Uh, no sunburns and a, and a big marlin. God bless you.